Okay, in this next video we're going to continue on with project creation and what we're going to focus on specifically is working with the user defined fields. This is discussed in more detail on page 29 of the user's manual which you can see here to the left but we will just work with the project for now. So this project is open and if you recall you hit input data fields to get back to that dialog box. And again, this is where you set up the project parameters that you are interested in collecting in the field. So this works as a switchboard. This record screen here, these toggle boxes that you check mean that you want these available on your data collection device or on the desktop. So I will turn on the inventory details. and I'm going to select other one. So if you want to turn something off, you just click it off. Again, these are optional. You then can hit the tabs to look at more specifics about each one of these. So here we have the DVH. You can see that you can change this if you want to take an actual measurement of the tree with a DVH tape and enter that in. You can do that or you can keep it as a class. You can measure, change the measurement to inches or centimeters. Zone sample, this is very valuable if you're interested in comparing different areas within your overall project, say aldermanic wards, management units, um, whatever you could think of. So just for purposes of demonstration, I will say I am eventually planning on looking at two neighborhoods in my area, Galewood and Montclair. Condition, what you'll see is that Streets has a number of defaults set up in here. Again, these are just defaults that Streets has set up. They're not mandatory. So if you have your own system of condition codes, you can certainly change that accordingly. Say if I wanted to have an excellent condition, I can add that in here or a very poor condition. What you'll also see is that there's a woody condition factor and a foliage factor. This has to do with assigning an aesthetic value to a tree. So since I am saying that an excellent tree is better than a good tree, I am going to increase that. So if I was adding a very poor tree, it would probably be 25 or something to that effect. You can also import in a list of streets if you have that as a text file or a CSV file. You can manually just type these in if it's a handful of streets. I happen to have a small list of about 10 street names as a text file that I am going to import in here. Site type, again there's a number of defaults here set up, front yard, cutout, median, these can be customized location site it just has four basic setup land use again the defaults can be modified maintenance defaults are available if you want to use these modify simplify as desired conflicts I'm just going to accept these so we can just do the demonstration other one so streets has other one, two, and three. These are user defined fields. So if you were interested in say collecting something that streets doesn't have available, you would have to define that here and then also define the variables that would be available. So for instance, if you want a tree height, you would have to then define ranges. So it doesn't accept values, numeric values. So if you were doing something like tree height, you'd have to have zero to 10 feet, 10 to 20, and so on. So let's say, for example, we wanted to do a risk assessment. And I'm just going to set up one value. Yes, and we'll assume that if it's not toggled on, that there is no risk ass assessment recommendation. The other thing I will mention is that if you notice when we hit other two, that's all grayed out. So if you wanted that available, you'd have to go back to the record and then turn that on. And hit OK when you're done and do File Save Project.